Hello everybody, I'm Gavin and I'm a British bookworm. So today I'm going to review the last book that I've just literally just finished the other day. The Politically Incorrect Guide to Climate Change by Mark Morono. It's a best-selling book that was on Amazon for a long time and I believe this might be its third print because it's been a very, very high seller. So as a book, I'm going to jump into this. It gets a 4 out of 5. It's really well written. It, the chapters go from one, to the, one subject to another in a nice flow. It really does hit some key talking points about the subject of climate change. It goes into the science, it goes into theory, so some theories of it, it goes into the politicalization of it, and quite frankly, it goes into the bullshit that is within the community that sees themselves as part of this community. Uh, you could argue on both sides to be a bit more neutral in, in this particular video. Um, when you pick books, you obviously pick books which you feel more inclined to agree with. And I'm going to try to change that in the sense I'm going to force myself to read some books on, this, on these issues that are on the opposite side of how I personally feel. But I should stress that when you read books, you're obviously your own personal interpretations to that point of reading that book, to where you're reading that book at that time, obviously will have a direct effect on how you view the book and how you, how you see what it says, that whether you agree with it, whether you think it's full of shit, or whether you agree with it and think it's the, the, the God's truth. So, just to try and keep this a bit more neutral, um, the thing that comes out of this book, that I'm, I've, I was, I was like, I keep saying on these videos, I was going to write some talking points, but I'm, I'm having a conversation on camera to whoever's watching this, and I'm expressing my views on the books, the book, and the subject. So the author is a very charismatic speaker. He worked for the American government uh, in the two thousands. And he had a position, I'd say a position of influence, but I didn't obviously lead political uh, legislation or movements towards the cause as such, but he had a voice. Um, and he is on the side of uh, being against the alarmism. And he has many good interviews on YouTube. He's debated and challenged very publicly um, to the to the to often it seems to the embarrassment of the other person who believe that man-made CO2 is taking the earth to what they call the tipping point and that we are going to reach a position where we're all doomed now as a person I have always found this subject of massive interest I thought when I was younger that it was all true and I remember as a teenager it had a very strong effect on me emotionally where I felt that we were destroying the planet and there's a difference I need to say there is a difference between the massive media push and scientific push and politicalization of science as they call it to uh, climate change and to environmentalism I need to make that really clear so I, I am hugely believe I believe massively that with the the population of a planet is dis, dis, it treats the earth with disrespect and it is despicable how we treat the environment and we have a massive disrespect to the environment by and large as a society in the west and even to the countries that we are supposedly are told are better at how they love uh, gear mother earth etc i think there's a lot the hypocrisy on this subject is overwhelming so while I do, um, I am so that the 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 irony is the irony is, as it's mentioned in this book, the subject of climate change has taken over the subject of environmentalism by and large, and people inflate the two or put the put the two together and make out it's the same subject. It isn't. It blatantly isn't. You only need to look into the subject a little bit to understand that environmentalism is actually being affected by the money that's going into climate change research and that the money should the, the some of the money or a lot of the money or if not maybe all of the money 
you could argue, that goes into climate change research and the scientific bodies and institutions that take, that whoring themselves, I'm just going to be really blunt, taking a shitload of money to support the CO2 narrative, that money should be being put into environmentalism and to world poverty. The problems of today, right now, where people are literally suffering as I sit on the city and you watch this from a nice house in a nice environment in a western world probably, they, there's people literally suffering right now because they have nothing and we have everything. So when this discussion is put into the light of the day, it becomes um, somewhat ironic and extremely hypocritical now to get into the book the book goes through many 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 topics of this and the the pro uh, the pro alarmist man-made co2 is creating a tipping point for the world's ecosystems are always seemingly very arrogant they're self-affirming they're almost cut they're a cult I was, I was going to say they're almost cult-like, but they become, they seem very cultish, and there's a there's a very dishonestness to the side on climate change. There's a very very if you look into the subject with any degree of uh, openness and sincerity, in my opinion, in my opinion, and I trust my own opinion obviously to a degree, that I find that they're very dishonest. A lot of these people in the way they're argumenting the point. Now I've watched many, many lectures. I'm going to put one I've literally just watched today. I've debates and chats. I'm going to put this video here just to highlight it. To go and watch that, which is a debate between three different, between six people, three on one side, three on the other, from 2007, and it was a very good debate. And honestly, when I've watched it, I watched it in the past many years ago, but I've rewatched it today, and in honesty, I was kind of very I was more neutral in watching it than I was in the past, even after reading the comments. So my point I'm going to make before I carry on is I am very much open to being changed in my views on this subject, even though was as a layman I have had a very big interest in this subject and I've watched hundreds of hours of experts over the years discuss it. I am someone who really does go into things quite deeply when I wish to learn things and research things and what I find and feel and see and experience in studying it is how ridiculous the alarmist side comes across and then the side on the sort of more level-headed side of look the earth's always been changing temperature the, the the sun has a massive impact on the on the on the heat cycles of and the weather patterns of the earth a huge impact the uh water vapor has a massive impact on the temperature um and you find out all these variables and the, so the the anti alarmists put the science across in a far superior way now does that mean that they're automatically on the right side of a subject no it doesn't does that mean that you know the the way they present it and they can argue it better no but what i would like to say on that is truth will always prevail and if the alarmists which i have watched many discussions on this okay and it, they they very very rarely put their argument across in any decent way that makes me think only recently have i been studying this subject have i actually started to consider the conception of uh, the increasing of CO2 having an impact on the earth but if you go into the deeper elements and I don't when I say that I don't mean I have the ability to study the scientific peer review papers but deeper for myself I look into the subject like reading people who have the skills and uh, to, to discuss it and then to analyze the peer review papers and then to discuss it so it's more easily understood by someone someone like me who's not a scientist what i find is that there's a dishonesty that they don't seem to present their argument in a decent way and you could argue well they're scientists they're not debaters but i'm sorry that's not open for my my digestion i believe that if the view of the science is really strong that the argumentation of 
the facts is so strong and overwhelmingly true that most of the political establishments and public society would believe it. But as he discusses in this book, most polls on this subject that he states or talks about prove that most human beings don't believe the alarmism, don't believe in the alarmism, they don't believe in the science that's been presented, and they do and can see through the money-driven politicisation of the subject. So to go back onto the book, what does he discuss on this book? What's the kind of main things I take out of this book? In all honesty, it gets me angry. It gets me pissed off. Because reading this book, the guy challenges key people and they run away from the argument. If you have the ability to save the planet Earth and you know you're on the side of truth and somebody who you think is a dickhead approaches you with a microphone and tries to challenge you and your life work is basically that that subject and you are an expert on that subject and you cannot stand there like a fucking fighter or a boxer you're going to run you're going to run away from the subject but it's not just your life and safety like a martial artist being attacked on the street you're not just going to run away if you know that you can handle the situation and you, you you're in a situation where it's a, a fight situation so if Morano walks up to a scientist and challenges him with a microphone and just asks a general you know challenges something he said you you said this However, look at the situation now. You were wrong. And that scientist can't really refute it or has a real genuine answer. It's It says a lot. It says a lot. It says everything to me that. Now, the things that really come across from this book, I'm not going to go into the science. I'm not going to go into the science because it's up to you to buy this book and go through or do your own research on the subject. But I've done a, I have done a fairly high amount on this subject personally all right and i find that those who believe in the alarmism this is my personal personal opinion it's just an opinion but i believe that the majority of those who believe in the alarmist and who believe in the rpcc have done next to no research and i space that on comments that i've read on the things that i've seen that they've stated how emotional that they are and they do not seem to understand the actual science and what many, many scientists say. I'm going to say this to you on this video. I've said it to a few videos. I've sort of mentioned it on a few videos. There are thousands and thousands of scientists who do not believe that man-made pollution, or it's not pollution, let's get that straight. See, I'm even saying the fucking sound bites by accident, just for the audience, that CO2 is raising the temperature to a point where we are going to all die or that the situation is because you get people who try to jump into all the sentences that someone like me is saying now and make criticisms of what though we didn't say that there is a very very let's be very clear on this the alarmists are using fear fear porn like covid19 lockdowns used in the governmental nudge units on my last book They've been using it for over 30 years, fear porn. They've been using this threat, this doomsday scenario, where we are all going to die or our grandchildren are going to die. And that if we don't take action today, right now, the consequences on the planet, on our human life, on our ecosystems, on, on all animals, is going to be uh, horrific. Now, that is just a blatant lie. It's just a blatant lie. And anyone who believes that, I listened to that uh, uh, another video which I'll link there. It'll link it here. Uh, basically discussing uh, one of the creators or founders or various key figures of uh, Extinction Rebellion. And I listened to that video and he's obviously a communist. I'm changing subjects a bit, but this guy's obviously a communist. He's very, he comes across as intelligent and I related to a lot of things he's saying in this video or this interview shall I say sorry I'll link it here if I can um, but at the same time the amount of there's, there's no science behind it they're saying that they're arguing right so they'll say you only need, his comment was you only need to research a subject 15 minutes before you can conclude that the science is done it's absolutely categorically done 
anybody who says that is a, I'm going to swear here, just before you get censorship, we'll learn, uh, you know, plop, plop, is a fucking moron. Roger, you're a fucking moron. To say that someone has to study something for 15 minutes before they can conclude the scientific status of a subject. I've been looking into this for 15 years and I'm saying I'm still open to being changed by it. But I just believe the alarmists are extremists. They're fucking, they just come up the people at Stop Oil and the uh, Extinction Rebellion. The things that they're saying are absolutely preposterous. They're absolutely preposterous. And so this guy quotes in his book, Gallup polls that prove that the majority of the population and political establishment don't believe it. So that's one key thing that the, the book brings up. Another key thing, and this is really what I want to get across from this book, how much shit people talk. How much shit people talk. There are so many people that talk so much shit and they get away with it. And we live in a society where you probably can challenge me on this video. I can do it. I don't give a care. I don't care. But there's so many public faces in society that get to speak so much shit about things that they do not know anything about. So the celebrities that are quoted, we've got to do something. Otherwise, we're going to die in 10 years or in 15 years. This book highlights the dumbest fucking statements the most stupid statements that people in authority scientific community people who are actually part of the rpcc or in 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 that world in that domain this they they make permanent doomsday threats now if you've noticed doomsday threats are always around the corner five years from now ten years from now the debate that i've just put up she clearly says the woman in, 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 on, the, in the, on the pro alarmist side of, of, of doomsday scenarios, she clearly says that we've got 10 years to act. In 2007, Extinction Rebellion and other people, the uh, Lord whatever from Britain, uh, part of the UN, uh, some something that Extinction Rebellion always like to say in the sound bites for the media, we've got 12 years to go before we reach the tipping point where we're locking the temperatures in and we're all doomed. This book goes into how many doomsday scenarios this cult has brought up, going back to even the 1800s, I think, on some cases, or early 1900s. It is preposterous so that if you think, if you do not do any educational, historical, scientific research on the different voices of this subject, and you just basically go into the narrative and listen to one argument on this subject, then you're going to act and come across a, an absolute fool. I've just listened to this debate with an open mindedness this morning and had a more neutral perspective on it because I'm thinking, right, I'm going to be open minded to this subject because I have no, why would I have a bias? Why do I want to believe one side or another? You know, but the reason why I have such a strong opinion on this subject is the conversation on. On climate change, right? And he, this book goes into this as well a little bit. Is this, and I really want you, if you believe in man made global warming is a, a, an extinction event, that's the thing I'm not de de debating. As the debate I've just listened to, all the scientists agree that CO2 is raising the world's temperature, all of them, right? But it's to such a nil effect based on natural CO2. But we've been told that they're pumping out so much. But then again, we know that the Earth's about 415 parts per million of CO2 at this moment in time. But 300, at 350 parts per million, we were told, sorry, after 400, we were told by scientists. So this is really important. This is one example that this book highlights and other books I'm reading or I've read have highlighted. When we were when we were at 350 parts per million, there were experts out there saying if we get to over 400 parts per million, we're doomed. It's the t t tipping point of no return. We're now at 415 parts per million or 425, whatever it was, it is now. And they're now saying, oh, we've still got 10 years. They've been saying we've got 10 years every 10 years for 50 years, as this book highlights. So they've been saying we've got 10 years to act for 50 years essentially all right so just 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 understand what that that the, the foolishness of not questioning that people are telling you that there's five or ten years to take some action
Now this is really important. I get this across in this in this book review, and I'm sorry that I'm babbling on a bit, but I am covering it the contents in a bit. the The book goes into the key question that none of these climate green activists ever, ever, ever wish you to uh, understand. What you are proposing as transfer of wealth, all right, is to basically repre repress, and I'm going to use racial terminology now because it ultimately comes down to white Western civilizations are now telling black countries or dark-skinned places that are still trying to develop that you can't grow because you are going to pollute the earth with coal fuel, uh, coal power stations, fossil fuel power stations. So therefore, you are we're going to block you from growth. Now, to me, that is not only extremely evil, but it's racist. And that's where I'm saying my racial terminology. That's as far as I'm going to take the racial side. It made me question, reading this book made me question that. Because in this conversation, nobody's having this conversation that the hundreds of trillions, I've just listened to this debate, which I've just told you about this morning. The majority of the conversation and I'm hearing is 100 trillion. So over the next hundred years, we have to spend over a trillion a year on the on the green energies, on on all the things that we must do to stop CO two, to reverse power production from uh, fossil fuel and carbon emissions, carbon production, to reduce carbon emissions, and we're going to have to spend a hundred trillion over the next hundred years. Now. As he says in this book, and I've come across this from other sources, other scientists, he's not a scientist by the way, but from other sources that have really spent their life studying this subject. Even if we spend all this money, and in the lecture that I've just debate I've just listened to, 580 trillion is another uh, 580 trillion is another figure I've just overheard on this this debate today. Even if we spend all this money. And at the expense of all the third world countries living around in poverty, 4 billion people living in absolute abject poverty in the world at the minute today, we're only going to stop the effects by four years. That's what the IPCC science says. That's what Morano's point, key, one of these key points in this book is. Even if we do all this, uh, this massive change into society, which is almost like uh, the um, revolution in the Bolshevik Russia, that's the Roger Hallam, that's kind of where he's going with it. <clears throat> he's looking at literally a massive up, up, upheaval of societal norms, and he's literally, basically, in in um, hidden language, referring to like a Russian Bolshevik uh, uh, revolution where we kill the elite and the czars. Now, I'm not uh, pro elitist. I'm not the. Uh, I'm not pro establishment, but I would say that. To me, if we're looking at spending trillions of pounds on technological systems and political and farming and institutions to to reduce the temperature from changing for four years in a hundred years' time, which is what the IPCC is saying, that they we're literally stopping microscopic changes in temperature at huge and this is what this is what I was trying to get to. Huge, huge, huge disadvantages and this uh, is a huge disservice to society. They're not questioning if we do if we do all this. Let's just do it. Let's throw all this money. Let's go green. Stop people driving the cars tomorrow. Make it illegal. Turn all the power stations off. Even their own scientific experts all, all say that it's already too late anyway. That the, the temperature, if we've locked it in as the term they like to use, there's always always going to be this lock on. And that we're all, if we stop everything we do now, it's already too late. So they're proposing, that's what some of them or some of the subject matter is saying, right? But they want to say, well, no, we've got to stop you driving your cars to work. You've got to work from home. You've got to do this, you've got to cycle to work, you've got to have less children. This book goes into some of the most preposterous ideas that you could ever hear. 
you could ever read from people who are supposedly experts or intelligent individuals who are from the scientific community, right? Almost to the point of eugenics. Yeah, almost to the point of eugenics. So not only do people who have no right to talk, actors like Leonardo DiCaprio, people who talk utter shit, utter shit, who say things and who are put on fucking United Nations voice or, you know, be put into as spokesman and they just chat utter shit. Prince Charles chats utter shit in this book. He's quoted and says things that are absolute, utter, abject bollocks. And the you, you, scientists are saying absolute abject bollocks. Members of the IPCC are lying and saying utter hysterical bollocks. And that is not science. And those people who wish to support the IPCC need to justify that. And they also need to justify spending hundreds of trillions of pounds on a solution that isn't going to be a solution. That's something that they are sort of trying to avoid saying so when people are saying that if we spend all this money we've got to spend all this money we've got to make these massive changes to how we run our our societies and yet they even admit themselves in their own scientific literature that it's barely going to make a fraction of a degree difference but i think it's like was it one a third of a, 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 a one third i think one third of a degree difference to the entire planet's temperature and I've not even gone into the argumentation that goes into, um, I won't say destroying the argument, but the idea that CO2 is um, this massive trace gas, this trace gas is have this massive effect on the planet. I'm not even going to discuss that because you need to all do your own research and, and, and read the book. And what else? What else have I, what else have I got to say? I'm going to finish. Um, it's a really well written book that gives you a basic summary of a massive subject but one of the things it goes into is the fact that there's a massive massive amount of dishonesty dishonesty on the side of those who wish to promote it that all the money is on the side of the alarmists for years they said that anyone who spoke against co2 uh propaganda or whatever however you want to put it they're getting paid by a big oil and it turns out that's been one another another lie that everyone who's spoken out as a scientist against this has had their career destroyed. People didn't wish to speak out about it for many years because they had careers destroyed. Members of the IPCC now are moving out of the out of the uh, the authorities of the IPCC and criticising the things that they've been saying. And they've admitted that every every IPCC report has to be more extreme to create more movement in the political spectrum. Now. I could go on and on and on, but all I'm going to say is I'm open to change, I'm open to review my own opinions on this, but I have done my own research. Compared to most laymen, I have done a massive amount of research on this subject. That doesn't mean I don't know, that doesn't mean I know what I'm talking about, but it does go, I go off what I feel is genuine, what people are voicing. I believe that what he quotes with the sign, the sign, the, the, the number of scientists that he quotes that refute man may go on he talks about over a thousand scientists that came to him that didn't agree with the ipcc you looked at the non-ipcc the non-intervironmental climate change panel the the i the, the m i forget how to I forget what it is but basically there's numerous scientific communities who do not believe that our production of burning of fossil fuels is sending us over this tipping point which is another slot another slogan that they've created to create a movement when people start using scientific terminologies or they use not scientific terminologies when people are using slogans in their argument and everybody we're reaching it's an existential crisis is one that they like to use we're looking at slogans that like the communists used that mao used that stalin used that the soviet union used this is the really this is like a, a, a warning. It's a warning. When you're getting people using language and slogans and everyone in that community is using their slogans, that is a warning, usually. That is a warning. And I'm telling you, I know what I'm saying for a fact. It's like uh, the animal farm. It discusses that, or 1984. The evil personified. So this guy, 
was told he was evil. So he's represent a rep representation of Satan personified. So rather than having a Jesus, the immaculate, holy God walking on earth, the perfect human being, this man, because he doesn't agree with the scientific community of the IPCC, one of the representatives of the argument of man being Gleil Mwabin called this man evil personified. He was the satanic being in a man walking the earth because he didn't agree with the alarmists' opinions, backed by the scientific community that he has spoken to. Now, I'm going to go now, but that is something I want to let you think about. When you have to use that kind of language and rhetoric against the opposition, then you have to question your integrity, and you have to question your side. You have to question your reasoning. And that goes throughout this book. This book quotes many of the scientists who disagree with the alarmists and explains why. And they say it's anti-science, it's nonsense, it's bunk, it's stupid, it's foolish. And that is the scientific experts saying that who disagree with the IPCC and all the people that are taking hundreds of millions of pounds out of the system to promote CO2. It's all about CO2. And they ignore the sun. They ignore numerous other factors. The last thing I'm going to say is everybody that I've listened to, everybody that I've heard sport speak about this, say that the climate has hundreds or thousands of variables that models which they base all their interpretations of it or computer models cannot work out the future. And that is where I'm going to leave it. So if you've liked this video or you wish to find a good book on the subject of climate change, if you are on the alarmist side, I'm genuinely putting a hand out to you and saying buy this book and actually read it and try to see the opposite side of it. Because all I see by the alarmist, I don't see them really going into detail or counter-arguing the points of view from those who believe that CO2 is a... Uh, is a, a it is a greenhouse gas, but at the same time, we are not all going to die. My point is this. I believe from the little bit of research compared to the scientific community and the little bit of intelligence that I have, I believe that we're all okay. That's what I believe. And if you said we're all okay, there's no financing, there's less financing, all the money just goes... You say, no, do you know what we found out? We're all okay. The temperature's been changing for thousands and millions of years. There's thousands of variables, but we cannot say just one thick one factor is that there is the overriding issue of climate when there are thousands of variables to it. And that's where I'm gonna go. So if you like this video, give it a like, subscribe to my channel. Hopefully understand that I'm a truth seeker by watching this video. I am open to discussion and chat to those who believe on the other side, but you need to present your arguments better, guys, because your argumentation of emotional total world destruction is ridiculous. It is absolutely ridiculous. We need to have a conversation rather than the kind of alarmist, threatening attitude that you have. And I'm going to have to go and leave it with that. So if you like this video, give it a like, subscribe, and do your own research. Please look at the other side. I'm going to be looking at the other side now. In the next couple of years, I'm going to be researching more on what the alarmist science is saying. But at the minute, when I do look, I do not see the evidence to support what they're saying. It just doesn't seem to be there. But I'm willing to be proven wrong. Anyway, see you later, everybody.